Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's been a while since we've done a video blog diary. Uh, I've been having a few issues with self-confidence, imposter syndrome, a general lack of self-worth and overall mental well-being. Uh, it's not something I like to talk about, it's not something I like to bring up, whether that's being a man and hiding that there's issues going on or that I'm having some issues, I'm having problems and not discussing it with people um, whether I feel that I shouldn't be impinging because other people have their own issues uh, regardless it's been affecting me for a while it's been affecting, uh, I've been interacting with people um, kinda took a step away from social media, from interacting um, I did put out some videos in the meantime, but that was a little different in the sense of it's not an interaction in real time. Um, but hopefully I'm, I've am i taken steps to be on the other side of that, and I took a big step yesterday, uh, Saturday, um, as you can see by this Facebook post that is on the screen now. Um, Set myself a to-do list, ran through the to-do list, tidied the house, did the housework, cleared all the clutter in the place, did all the dishes that had been piling up, gave myself a bit of a spruce up uh, with a shave and a shower. I've been letting myself go quite a bit. Um, partly because I could get away with it because I'm working from home. Um, so my interactions with people were being limited anyway at least in person I obviously did my job I was interacting with people but from a safe distance uh, just little things like that I seem to have I've taken one positive step yesterday that has continued on today uh, the sun is shining as you can see through the window behind me here and it's having a positive effect mentally and I would like to take this chance just to send some good vibes out to those who reached out. It is appreciated, it is cherished, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing so. So what have I been up to and what is on the horizon for myself and the channel? Well, speaking of horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn, including the DLC expansion, is currently free for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 subscribers uh, under the part well, as part of the Sony Play at Home initiative that they've got going on. Uh, there were nine games, I believe some of them are now no longer available, but Horizon Zero Dawn is still available for a number of weeks. So I started working through that. I started that yesterday. Um, luckily I had saved the when I had it on disc format. I didn't delete my save data, so I've jumped straight into New Game Plus, um, which just means all your stats carry over, so I'm breezing through it, but again, I just love playing this game for the story and the action, and it'll be interesting to see what the DLC content is, because I didn't have that the first time. So that's what I'm doing there game-wise. Uh, we are coming up towards the end of the month, so we will soon find out what the May I can't believe it's May already. Uh, we'll soon find out what the May PlayStation Plus games are. In April, there was Days Gone, which I, I've i played through a number of times, but again, I had on disc format. So I have taken advantage of getting a digital copy, so it's always there, should I choose to jump into that world again. Um, because viewers of the channel may remember that I've mentioned I'm not making the same a mistake is too strong a word, but I'm not making the same decision I did with the PlayStation 4. Um, there was a lot of end of era PlayStation 3 games that were released on the PlayStation 4 in an enhanced format. There are games on the PlayStation 4 at the end of its life cycle or in its latter stages that are on either were dual released on PS5 or will undoubtedly get a remastered version on the PS5 at some point. 
So I'm holding out until I actually get a PlayStation 5, which will probably be towards the end of this year, if there's actually any in stock. It's been ridiculous uh, with regards to the stocking issues. But I will be holding off on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Watch Dogs Legion, uh, The Last of Us Part 2, and a few other games where there's dual releases or potential dual releases in that yearly cycle. Uh, this will likely also include WWE 2K22, which was recently announced. Um, although by the time that comes out, I will hopefully be in the process of getting a PlayStation 5 anyway. So in those situations, revisiting some games that I really enjoyed is likely going to be what gets me between now and the PlayStation 5 ownership down the line. But that's in the future, that's gaming. Outside of gaming, uh, Josh and I watched Falcon and Winter Soldier on Disney Plus and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, the finale was Friday just gone, I watched it on my own and thought it was fantastic. I was teary eyed multiple times while watching that episode. There was a few different scenes and it was teary eyed for different reasons. Um, a lot of it around the Isaiah Bradley stuff which is unsurprising. Uh, Carl Lumbee did an amazing job in that role, uh, the minor supporting role, but he owned the screen whenever he was on there. So that has now finished and as I say the finale was great, it left enough dangling threads uh, for future MCU projects uh, including Secret Invasion, Armor Wars, various other projects like Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings which going from the trailer does have scenes in Madripoor which was a main setting for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Coming up in the MCU we have the Loki TV series where there's a reaction video on the channel for that, uh, for the trailer for that. There's Black Widow and there's as I mentioned Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings which also has a reaction for the trailer on the channel. The MCU looks like it's burning bright, we've had some struggles with the Covid and everything else delaying things but it looks like that's ramping up. There's going to be multiple movies, hopefully if the lockdowns ease as they are just now. Um, in the UK at least things are definitely on the upswing. Uh, so the cinema should hopefully be open by July, June, July. Uh, so that'll be great because there's, I say, there's Black Widow, there's Eternals also coming out, uh, there's Shang-Chi, there's the Spider-Man No Way Home, which is due out at the end of the year. So there's four MCU movies and a number of TV shows in the pipeline over the rest of this year. So that is going to be fantastic. Outside of the MCU, the Mortal Kombat movie is also now out. Uh, plugging the channel again, there was a reaction to the trailer for that. Uh, the links will be in the description below for all of them. Uh, or you can just go to the video, the channel and look through the videos there. It is out now on HBO Max. But for those who maybe aren't aware, uh, Josh, my son, uh, Josh's mum and I share custody of Josh. And this weekend he isn't here, this weekend he's at home with his mum. So he won't be here until Friday of next week. Which is why I have to hold off, because I can't watch it without him, he'll never forgive me. So I'm waiting until Friday to watch this movie and I am chomping at the bit to see it. The trailer looks fantastic, the characters are translated amazingly well from what I've seen. It looks like it's going to be brutal and gory. The reviews have reveled in the fight scenes and the goriness of the fatalities. Reviews that I've read, I've made sure I've read non-spoiler reviews, have all kind of said the same thing, that the action and the characters are great but the story's lacking. I'm watching this movie for the action and the fighting. The story, while not secondary, isn't the priority. And I know this is a world building where they're hoping to go into the se a second and a third movie in a trilogy at least. And another challenge that this version of Mortal Kombat had, that the 1995 movie, which I absolutely love as well, just for the record. But a challenge that this movie has that the 1995 movie didn't 
is that when the 1995 movie came out, the Mortal Kombat lore was relatively small. Um, the, move, the games themselves had only been out for a couple of years at that point. Whereas with this one, the games have been out for like 25 years now, maybe longer. There's a lot of history there, there's a lot of new characters that have come in over the course of the series. Some have came and went, some have came and stayed. And there was no way that they could have every single character from the, the games in this first movie. Johnny Cage being in a mission from the original 7 is quite a big deal, but the reasoning given by the writer and the director makes sense and it always leaves him open to be cast in the second movie or even the third movie but hopefully the second movie and undoubtedly I would want The Miz to be cast in that role. He is essentially WWE's Johnny Cage anyway so having him in the role I think he would play that role perfectly. Um, the main concern maybe would be due to the fighting style that he has, but again, he's a movie star, movie magic can cover a lot of things. Uh, so yeah, Johnny Cage should be played by The Miz in Mortal Kombat 2 whenever that's released, but we will be watching Mortal Kombat on Friday, so look out for a review video over the following weekend, next weekend. In addition to the reviews and the reaction videos, we will also be filming some unboxing videos as there are multiple items that have arrived sitting around the house waiting together time in the sun including if i go to my left here these two awesome harley quinn and batgirl figures now if we open this up here you can have a little look inside i'm not sure how much you see of that uh so there will be pictures at the end of the video regardless um but how cute is she the little hammer and the little joker card little gun and then if we close her over and we do the Batgirl, and we open the Batgirl one, as you can see how cute is she as well, with her little Batarang and her little grappling gun. Those are really cute figures. I, they were a fiver, I uh, got them from eBay. Uh, I can't remember the seller, I'd need to look and see who it was. Also, we got these absolutely amazing Cosbabies. Uh, they're from Hot Toys. Uh, this one here is obviously the Suicide Squad, and then there's three Birds of Prey. There's this one, and there's these two. Uh, now, again, they're kind of reflecting this, so there, there will be pictures at the end, and I'll be throwing a graphic up here just to kind of show off as well. Um, you can see it was an absolute steal from Zavi to get these figures. Uh, they were all half price. So basically I got four for the price of two. Coming from Hot Toys, you know they're very good quality, they're a fantastic range. And like I say, I got them from Zavi. I get a lot of things from Zavi. They do, now and again, they do stunning deals, they do stunning discounts. And at the same time, as I got the Harley Quinns, I also got this absolutely amazing, if we can get that on the screen without much in the way of reflection. Uh, this Squirrel Girl, with her bike, her little scooter there. That is an amazing figure from the Marvel Legends range from Hasbro. And again, I got that from Xavi, an absolute steal, as you can see by the screenshot I'm showing you here. It does say that it isn't going to be released until the 30th of May, uh, but mine was delivered along with the Harleys. Um, so I have no idea how that transpires, if that was an error or if they're just holding because maybe they had a few in stock but they're holding the 30th of May date you got all the stock in I don't know I don't work for Zavi um, but mine was delivered along the Harleys and it's genuinely the first time that I'm considering intentionally buying a second one so that I can have one unboxed and I can display one on the shelves somewhere around the house I have unintentionally bought the same figure more than once, it happens, you see something on a deal, you've got so many figures that you just forget you've got something. But this is the first time that I am intentionally considering buying a second version of a figure, just to make sure that I can display it but also have it boxed. That says something about the quality of the figure, uh, I love Squirrel Girl as a character, um, I'm really hoping she ends up in the MCU at some point. Anna Kendrick would be perfect to play the role, I believe. Um, 
but we'll see. I'm sure that they'll get around to her eventually. Maybe in one of the TV shows. She may be more of a TV show character. Um, she may even show up in the MODOK animated show with Pan Oswald. Because that looks like that's going to be off the wall. Um, but yeah, that is one figure I absolutely think is amazing. And I am really, really... If you look at the back here, you can see some other display images over on our scooter there. I am really considering getting a second one, especially at the price, 15 quid. Absolute bargain uh, from Savvy. So I would recommend you get over there and actually give them a go. In the coming months, uh, there are two new Harley Quinn figures that are due to be released uh, from Beast Kingdom. Now, Beast Kingdom were the ones who did the Cyclops figure, which is actually over there on the shelf. I'll zoom in. It'll probably be pixelated as hell, but I'll zoom in. Um, they do amazingly detailed figures in a quasi caricature way, um, slightly oversized head, but the articulation and the attention to detail is phenomenal. And there's two versions of Harley Quinn coming out. One is uh, the Batman the Animated Series version, and the other is the Suicide Squad version. They look phenomenal, and I am really excited for them coming out. Uh, they're on the Sideshow website at the moment. They're, they're on other places as well. They're going for like $70 for the Batman Animated Series one and $89 or $89.99 for the, uh, the Suicide Squad one. So working that out, it's about 50 quid, 60 quid, give or take for them. They look well worth the money. Zavi may have them on a deal. That Cyclops was on a deal from Zavi. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm really excited about them. What I'm not excited about and what is annoying me to a degree is the lack of Birds of Prey figures. And not just for Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn had a lot of costumes as you saw from the Cosbabies. Harley Quinn had a lot of costumes in that movie. Harley Quinn was joined by the other Birds of Prey who had multiple costumes. Black Mask had multiple costumes. Victor Zaz was in that movie. There's a lot, and I don't know how much COVID has affected that, because when Suicide Squad came out, there was figures everywhere. And the Harley Quinn Suicide Squad was ubiquitous in pretty much every figure range you could think of. So for the Birds of Prey stuff not to come out, that's, it is annoying. Because when I first saw the movie, my first thought, other than the movie was fantastic and really enjoyed it, was I can't wait to see the range of figures that come out based on the amount of costumes in it. And the fact that we've had virtually nothing. There are high-end figures like this, the Sideshow collectible ones that are going in a couple hundred dollars, a couple hundred pounds. Um, but there's not been that wide range of figures that I was hoping for and expecting. Anyway, look out for future unboxing videos. Look out for future reaction videos and review videos. And more importantly, look after yourselves and look after each other. Stay safe. Wear a mask and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.